Isn't life cool, everyone? When I was a kid, I used to be terrified of death kind of still am, but I used to have this recurring nightmare that I would be at the gates of heaven, which was for some reason a beach, and they just wouldn't let me in because I had forgotten something, so I just had to stay on this beach for the rest of time. Being on a beach for ages doesn't really give off that terrified of death vibe, but trust me, I was. I think a lot of people are scared of death and what comes after it. Hot take. <laughs> So a lot of media tries to make light of it, make it not so scary for people. You know, you've got shows like The Good Place, Upload, Ghosts, and the ever popular Oh No, Death So Scary, starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Ellen DeGeneres. But no television show makes quite as much light out of death as A Thousand Ways to Die. Imagine this scenario, your loved one dies horrifically from crashing their mobility scooter into a set of elevator doors. The elevator doors give way and the person just goes plummet into their death at the bottom of this elevator shaft. Your loved one, your pride and joy, the light of your life, breaks every single bone in their body, just dies instantly. Imagine then after the funeral, you go home, you turn on the TV, you're looking for some light-hearted escape and you see their death made into a comedy skit called Handicrapped. It's... Handicrapped? I'm, I'm sorry. Lovely inside and out. A Thousand Ways to Die was a TV show that ran for six seasons from 2008 to 2011 and I have never met anyone who's watched it before and I need to share the trauma that this show gave me with my millions of viewers. Here is my penis. If you've never seen this show before, which I assume most people haven't, it's a dark comedy anthology series based on actual deaths that happened. So the format of this show is you watch this quite frankly insane skit of the death intercut with professionals giving you facts about what's happening and also just weird medical videos, I don't know. Along with that, there's also a narrator who is so unforgiving of these people, it's horrible. They make out that all the people who died like are just disgusting people who got what was coming to them, so it's fine guys, like don't even worry about it, they're dead, but it's fine. But if this show is based on real deaths, which it claims that it is, they're just people who have made mistakes and died in horrible ways. Yeah, like I understand that, oh, it's just a TV show, but... <sighs> Come on. You'll get what I mean when I show you some clips. One way they represent the dead is by making them out to be the worst human to ever exist. Bill is a sleazebag abusive womanizer. Duke was a first class A number one bastard. But he was still a nasty son of a bitch. You make me just want to vomit! Another way they represent them is by making them seem like the biggest idiots the world has ever seen. Darren was painfully stupid. He was a total doofus. What can I say? I'm a freaking genius. Like, yeah, this this person died an incredibly painful death, which was just absolutely traumatizing to every person who saw it, but you can laugh because they were a little goofball. No, the narrator says that we're meant to feel happy that they've died. He's gonna die and you're gonna be happy he dies. No, sorry, Joe, I'm not deranged. Thanks. And sometimes the people who died are just normal people who didn't even do anything wrong. This girl, this poor girl, jamming along to Whale Song, top of my Spotify wrapped my eye out, hits a raccoon with her car. Now she, being an empath, gets out the car to give the clearly very dead raccoon CPR. Yeah, not the smartest thing to do, but did she deserve, I ask you this, to get her head ripped off by another car? Uh, I am not happy to see that. Come on, what? Gailey was just trying to bring Rocket back to life and she got freaking guillotined. Where the babies are swimming, there's gotta be a MILF around there. Speaking of heads flying off of bodies, the death titled D.U. Die. Did I mention they all have absolutely ridiculous names? More on that later. Anyway, this death, it's the most significant one from my childhood because it really gave me a lot of issues. It's these two guys drink driving. One of them sticks his head out the window to throw up and he just gets his head ripped off by a mailbox. Yeah. My guy Larry got hereditary. <laughs> this death in particular, I remember sitting on the stairs after watching it and I was looking to the right in my brother's dark doorway and I imagined Larry's headless body just emerging from the darkness. Oh my God, it was scary. And basically he cremated himself. So earlier I mentioned that all the deaths have stupid names. Here's a taste of that. Guy dies on a farm. Title is E-I-E-I, -E ow. Guy dies in Africa, title is Afrikaant. Don't like that one, it's very weak. This guy died, uh, they all seem to be guys dying. I promise girls die in this show too. There is equality. He dies while filming a low budget TV show and the title is Straight to DV Dead. Another guy dies in Mexico and the title is 
Mexican. So they're clearly not very creative. Victoria Station. God, it's just terrible. It, it is terrible. I, but I love it. Don't get me wrong here. I love it. I'm coming off very critical, I think, but this show is very entertaining. Even just seeing what kind of experts they bring on is entertaining. Like sometimes they get normal experts, like a physicist or a surgeon or a historian. But sometimes, oh, sometimes. There's, there's, there is nothing I can say. Let's move on. The top comment says, that's exactly what I'd imagine a chastity belt expert would look like. And I can't lie, they're absolutely right. Now, I want you to picture a Viking expert. What would that guy, because it is a guy, what would that guy look like? What would he dress like? Have you got the picture? How does it compare to this? <laughs> he has an ax. I just love it. It's so extra. So extra, in fact, that when he's on the show two years later, he no longer has the axe. I just absolutely love the idea that when they called him back to be on the show, the producers must have been like, hey Skip, it was great to have you on the show. Hopefully we'll have some more Viking deaths for you later on down the line. Great. But if you come back again, I'm I'm gonna need you to leave that axe behind. What? But how are they gonna know that I'm a Viking expert without it? They'll know, Skip. You, you don't have to dress up. Nobody else dresses up on this show. What about the adult baby? Breastfeeding at my age definitely seems completely normal and not a disorder. Moving on from that stellar acting job I just gave, the acting is another thing I'm also obsessed with on this show. Some of the actors, like me just then, look like they're putting absolutely no effort into what they're performing. I can't believe you did that. Then give me a divorce! And some of the actors put the most effort you've ever seen into this performance. Destroy it! I'm blind. I'm blind. I've gone blind, Mabel! I'm blind! But none of this fantastic acting can distract from what is hands down the saddest death in the entire show. This tout seller walks into the street and gets hit by a car. The traffic light was on green, so was the crossing. Do you know the reason? A little slug went into the electrical box and got electrocuted. My guy was just trying to stay out of the hot sun and he got absolutely frazzled. He didn't do anything wrong. And the narrator doesn't even say anything about the slug's death. Justice for the slug. <laughs> the narrator not saying anything about the slug though is not the worst thing the narrator's done. He is so mean sometimes. It's the only thing that explains why she didn't take a bat and club him like a baby seal. There was no reason for how aggressive that was. What did that baby seal ever do to you, Mr. Narrator? And why does he just think that everyone wishes that everyone else was dead? Here's another one. These girls are at a sleepover and one of them says, pillow fighting is cringe. I cannot believe I am even here. The other girls were beginning to regret saving Carly from drowning at camp 10 years ago. Bro, she said one bad thing and now you're saying that these girls wish they didn't save her from drowning years ago. Just kick her out. Ow. Why is why are you gonna be so extreme? He's just so mean and he says everything with his whole chest as well. Nighty night, you twisted little freak. Yeah, I mean, I think adult babies are slightly odd. But this guy has a massive amount of hatred towards them. He also hates people from Boston. Not only are these kids stupid, they talk funny. Just because we can't all narrate a semi-successful Spike TV show doesn't mean we deserve to die. Do I talk funny too, Joe? Do I? Kidding, please don't kill me. For real, I think that the narrator might have killed someone in the past. And he's just trying to get everyone on his side and be like, yeah, these people deserve to die. Don't they? Don't they? Don't, guys, don't they? Who agrees that they deserve to, anyone agree that they deserve? This show is often very weird in a myriad of ways. Myriad, nice. If Mikhail couldn't have Sonia, he'd have to fit it into something else. So when he spied a lonely raccoon, it was game on. A man who might consider bestiality. Right, I'm done with the show. It's too weird for me now. <laughs> Rocket really can't catch a break, can he? They were essentially dragged to death. The show A Thousand Ways to Die was halted and eventually cancelled in 2011 when the workers striked for health and pension benefits that the company just never gave them. So A Thousand Ways to Die... Why is there a fly? Oh, that absolutely terrified me. But what the hell? So, A Thousand Ways to Die wasn't giving the staff their basic needs and then the show died. In a way, it's really poetic. I would take the tone of the show and say they got what they deserved, but loads of people lost their jobs, so like, it's quite sad actually. And I'm not gonna stoop to the level of the narrator. 
horrible man. Sorry, narrator, if you're watching this. I understand that it's the writers. The writers are the ones to blame. You were right not to give them those health and pension benefits. I'm kidding, obviously. Anyway, if you want to watch this show, I think all the episodes are on Amazon Prime. They were on Netflix for a while, but I'm not really sure. You can find it somewhere. But most of the deaths are just on YouTube, and I definitely would recommend watching it because it is very funny and entertaining. And if you enjoyed my video and want to support my channel, you can like the video and subscribe. I'm trying to reach 100 subscribers because I've been on YouTube for three years, over three years, and I've only got 69 subscribers. This is also my first ever commentary type video, so let me know what you thought of it. I reply to all my comments all the time because I don't usually get that many, so if you have something to say, I will talk to you in the comments because I'm lonely. No, I'm not. Anyway, feel free to leave a comment. Have you seen this show before? Are you gonna watch it? Do you think I'm an idiot with no friends? Please don't say that, please don't say that. That's all from me today. Bye. <laughs>